Among always a pleasure to welcome you. Well, thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we have done this before. Uh, you know, you have played so many roles. Yeah. But today was an interesting day. You actually, you know, were uh, with Vinod Koslo on the fireside chat. Yeah. And when two good people come together, there's always some, you know, new things happen. Yeah. Um, so just wanted to, you know, start this with learning from you how that went. Well, I thought the chat was perfectly done uh, uh, for this particular audience uh, of IITNs. Remember. All of us from the IITs are a very aspiring lot, and we're all looking to learn from someone like Vinod what exactly uh, he did different and how he continues to do things different that help him do, do what he does well in the venture capital industry and in technology. And so with so many technologists with so much aspirations, it was useful to hear him talk about what he did different. If I could kind of very summarily encapsulate what he said. It was like he always really attempted to take a different route than necessarily what was expected of him, whether it was his parents or his teachers or anybody. He basically did things based on whatever he was interested in and passion. And he was always interested in technology. And from the very beginning, he was interested in potentially using that technology to build a company, came to America, built that. And over the many decades he's been doing venture capital, he talked about how you could reinvent uh, both the, the sort of space of a particular area, whether it's reinventing education or reinventing healthcare or reinventing transportation, you know, reinventing energy. And so that's what motivates him. And so that's what he focused on in his fireside chat. And I thought the questions that came from the audience were very good. Uh, interaction, I hope, was good. And overall, it was very well received by this particular audience. Uh, I think you touched a very good point, reinventing, and that's becoming, you know, uh, the part and parcel of, you know, how we could do things better in Silicon Valley, especially. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, you have, t you know, done the Gupta systems, then Keynote systems, uh, led Pan IT, you know, very effectively. Um, now you're venturing into the online education mm -hmm. space. In some sense, you know, it is a reinvention of yourself. Oh, very much so. Yeah, very much so. So, uh, if you can help us elaborate on that. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I, I had spent more than 40 years of my life in the tech industry, starting uh, in 1973 with IBM, and then moving on with Oracle, and then, as you mentioned, uh, Gupta Technologies, and then Keynote Systems. But always, I was focused on what you would call the business computing space, the area where you're helping to make businesses be more productive in order to do a better job. And frankly, the last, 50 years, possibly more, uh, most of the second half of the last century was really all about the business computing revolution where industry was changed dramatically. And all of us who are in this industry have been selling machine tools that help make this industry better, but they are kind of brain machine tools rather than physical mechanical machine tools. But things are changing. And certainly since the dawn of the new century, we are moving into an era of consumer computing much as we went from the steam engine to the internal combustion engine. And when you go from the kind of business machines, uh, the epitome of the company, by the way, was international business machines. So that's how much that was going on. But now we are into consumer computing. And the companies that are doing well understand how consumers uh, behave. They understand how society is changing. They are changing how we are consuming entertainment, how we are consuming um, the education, they're changing so many things that are all healthcare, etc. I just happened to have decided after doing 40 years of enterprise computing that I really didn't want to do anything more with enterprise computing. I want to reinvent myself, so to speak, and so I'm focused much more today on the educational technology space. It has the benefit of being more consumer oriented, touches people directly. Uh, it certainly is, has uh, tremendously new technologies, so they kind of intellectually interesting, and it's socially redeeming, which makes it a great place for someone like me. Among the other thing is, you know, uh, there's a lot of disruption that happens in, in, in these industries yeah. uh, because starting out, mm -hmm. um, like you know anything else prior to this, so there's still the struggle to find the right business model uh, because MOOCs came before and free online education is happening, MIT, Stanford, Harvard, everybody yeah. else is on there. Yeah. So uh, how do you think, you know, 
somebody like you look, take a look at this and say, what is the business model here? Yeah, great question, by the way. I think the business model fundamentally is a much harder issue to solve in the online education or education technology business than the technologies themselves, to be very blunt. Uh, uh, let me separate. There, there's online education. There's education for the the, the university side, the higher education, then there's university in K through 12, and then the K through 12 education, and then there's something that's emerging that you could generally call ongoing education or professional education, or in the old days it might have been called vocational education. These are white collar vocations rather than blue collar vocations. Within these three categories, I would argue that uh, the business model for K through 12 has largely been settled. Uh, in the United States at least, by the fact that schools are uh, semi-regulated entities. So these are government run with uh, public schools mostly. They, they buy stuff in very large quantities based on tenders and bids, etc. And so there's a fair amount of rigor that goes in the purchasing process. And unless you can build a strong, uh, almost like a B2B sales organization that sells to school districts and schools, it's very tough to break out in this business, uh, regardless of your technology. There are a few companies that are doing well. Without that, they are using what are called freemium models. But by and large, with the exception of a few freemium companies, much of the space of the K through 12 business in America is sort of B2B. And I don't think it's any different in most countries. Because in most countries, K through 12 is becoming a universal right. And therefore, governments are involved. And when governments are involved, there's bureaucracy. And fundamentally, the selling process is very different. Incidentally, I think even in the online, even in the higher education business, it's similar, true. Universities are usually some form of regulated, semi-regulated entity. And so when you build technologies, you have to kind of think about how to get it there. Though there's some possible greater leeway there for individuals. In the area of uh, professional education, it's a free for all. I think the possible business models can be very much uh, B2C, private, any number of possibilities exist. And there are quite a few companies that have done well in that space. Umang, thank you, like always, really appreciate it.